Hmm. A sudden change of scenery. Now where could I be? The stench of mortality is quite poignant. I wonder who would dare summon me to the mortal realm of all places. Ah, there you are, human. I do not know if your bravery stems from foolishness or naivety, but it is a trait I can respect. You are the first to succeed in summoning me to this realm, after all. Quite an impressive feat you have accomplished indeed. I have not felt magic this strong in ages. Incredibly strong magic, born from an incredibly powerful desire. I simply could not resist your call. I must admit though, I did not expect to find such a dedicated young mage waiting for me on the other side. Yes, I know you are a mage. I can sense the magic running through your veins. Quite gifted, are you not? I am also aware of all the necessary precautions you have taken to prevent me from the vow you hold rampaging through the land. <laughs> not that I would in the first place. Needless destruction is for newborn dragons who are not yet in control of their powers. I have no desire to waste energy on such fruitless endeavors. I am more intrigued by you and your motivations. I know you're kind. Magic-born humans. Some of them follow strict codes of conduct to ensure they are not corrupted by their own magic. But others, like you, love to dabble in the dark arts, tiptoeing between the line of good and evil. So tempting to follow the young conventional path and find the answers your morally inclined colleagues refuse to seek. I understand the appeal more than anyone. <laughs> Either way, I'm glad you are not bound by these useless, arbitrary rules. There is no entertainment in living a life that is so restricted after all. But well, let me ask you this, for curiosity's sake. Having power over the material world, the ability to manipulate your surroundings at will, is that not enough for you? <laughs> As expected, I can appreciate your candor. I see the ambition in your eyes. Of course you need more than that to be truly satisfied. You challenge yourself to achieve the impossible, and you work hard for it, no matter what it takes. My presence here is living proof of your determination. That is the curse of power, dearest mage. Mortals like you always want more, and more, and so much more. Tisk, tisk. Look at you now, so drained and weak that you can barely remain standing. <laughs> Did you perhaps believe that summoning me would be easy, my sweet, darling fool? It doesn't matter how strong you are, or how powerful your magic is, you are still mortal. I am ancient. My power unfathomable by the likes of you. The fact that I've been forced to assume this human-like vessel is proof enough that should I appear in my true form, the very fabric of your world will be torn to pieces. Dragons, we become so much more with age. We are worshipped as gods in some realms, admired by mortals and immortals alike. For you to believe yourself capable enough to handle me, as a familiar no less. Perhaps you are not brave as I initially assumed, but desperate instead. <laughs> desperate to prove yourself, bored of performing the same old tricks to entertain a couple patrons, 
Hoping to get her some coins for your efforts. <laughs> ah, it seems I have offended you. However, I'm simply trying to understand your reasoning. The price you have to pay for my presence in your realm is quite steep. So I want to know why you would risk everything to bring me here. Are you perhaps understanding your predicament now? You have exhausted yourself to this point. All for vanity. Ah, uh, this is no time to be hitting the ground so pathetically now, is it? After all that effort, at least pretend to have some dignity as a mage. <laughs> or, are you that desperate to kneel before me? I jest, I jest. No need to be upset. I do admire your guts, dearest mage. You certainly are different from other mortals I have crossed paths with in the past. Here, allow me to carry you. Your legs seem to be failing you, and I would greatly dislike to see you hurt yourself more than you already have. I do wonder, though, as a soul poor to come in contact with my physical vessel, to be closer to me, sharing body heat with one of the most dangerous beings in the Nine Realms. <laughs> Well, the role of a beautiful mage in distress, a bit more than they could chew, it does suit you. Oh, is that embarrassment I sense? I can feel your heart hammering against your rib cage, sense your skin flushing with heat as you try to hide your face from me. I will let you know that creatures far more powerful than you have gone mad after being in my presence like this. After touching just one inch of me. Quite the privileged position you're in now, dearest mage. In my arms, with your head on my chest, clinging to me as if I'm the pillar anchoring your consciousness to your body. <laughs> well, you're certainly bold for a mortal, I will give you that. Still, you should be more aware of the limitations of your physical form. You poor little thing. Whatever will I do with you, now that you are so weak, so defenseless, so pliant in my arms. You did not expect me to drain so much magic from you, I bet. You thought you had everything under control, is that right? Your ego certainly is something. Hmm, I couldn't devour you now. So very easily. Your flesh and your magic core would be but mere specks of dust for me. Though I cannot bring myself to do so. Why is that, I wonder? Hmm, maybe it is the raw potential I sense in you. You did bind me, after all. Something nobody else, mortal or immortal, has ever dared to do before. With more training, with more resources at your disposal, you could be a force to be reckoned with. Perhaps even the greatest mage of your generation. <clears throat> uh, it could be something entirely different. You see, I have avoided the mortal realm for so long that these sensations have become unfamiliar. I am used to living in the ninth realm, where the ancient beings can exist beyond the limitations of physical vessels. There are no such things as body heat or physical touch in the ninth realm, so to come here, to limit my senses to only five, is an entirely different experience, one I never thought I would have again. <laughs> I can sense your curiosity. Why would I spare your life when you have broken the laws of every realm to bring me here? Like you, dearest mage, I care not for rules. You have reminded me of emotions long forgotten in this pitiful state of yours. 
So much power in a fragile vessel. It makes me want to take you all for myself. A beautiful gem in the rough should be polished after all. Should be protected and nurtured. I will stay with you until you regain your strength. This is a promise I intend to keep. You must know though, that this little binding spell of yours has an expiration date. And when that day comes, I wonder if I will be able to hold back when you are so soft, so utterly appetizing, when your magic core keeps calling out to me. How can I resist consuming you? Shh, do not try to move or speak. You will only exhaust yourself even more, my dear. Your magic core needs the time to be replenished and your body still needs to adjust to my presence. You are in no condition to make bargains or deals, not in this weakened state. I will follow your magic signature and take you back to your abode, where you can rest. <sighs> Please, dearest mage, I doubt you are as clues as you make yourself seem. There is no spell that could ever contain me. Not permanently, at least. The moment you called me here is the moment you gave yourself to me. A mere matter of time. It was never meant to be the other way around. I am so sorry to disappoint and betray your delusions of grandeur. A mortal like you can never become a master of mind. This is the truth, and you should accept it. But fear not, to belong to me is not such a dreadful thing, my sweet mage. In fact, you should rejoice, for I will give you everything you desire. That is the reason why I'm here, after all. Is that not a familiar's job, to indulge the summoner's every desire? <laughs> You have already shown me how truly capable you are. There is nothing else to prove, my dear. I do not intend to harm you or challenge you. So close to those beautiful eyes. And keep leaning into me, just like that. I will not let you fall. <clears throat> Your little heart is beating faster again. How fascinating. Perhaps you are more partial to the idea of belonging to me than you think you are. <laughs> what a sweet, lovely creature, bearing your face into my chest like this, as if you can hide from me. I can read you like an open book, and it's fairly easy to see to that confident fun of yours. And it seems you've been starving for touch. Do you want me to hold you tighter? As if you were the most precious thing I could ever wrap my arms around. Do you want me to stroke your hair? Or maybe you want me to caress you with these sharp claws of mine, in a promise of more pleasure than pain? <laughs> my, my, what a delicious reaction. I appreciate you beginning to be honest with yourself, dearest one. There is no shame in loneliness or wanting companionship. I will be the first to tell you that. After centuries, millennia of existing in the ninth room, I know more than anyone how loneliness can eat away at you until there's nothing left. In a way, I'm sincerely grateful you called me here. Now there's no need to hide or wait or secretly yearn for the warmth of another. Not anymore. Not now that I am here. So just let yourself drift off and worry about nothing else, for I will take you home. To our home. You are mine now, dearest mage, and you will always be.